by God. Now, I don't know about you, but have you ever felt in that place? Have you ever been in that place where it seems like God has just taken away his presence from your life? Where you feel like you're just completely on your own? Like no one is there with you? Like you are all by yourself? You feel abandoned? Have you ever been in that place? Well, if you ever have, these guys had far more right to feel abandoned. And yet, even though they felt abandoned, they stand firm. But it's not completely standing firm. I want to show you something in here. Take a look at what they say here. The, the words that they speak are insightful. When you get down to verse 17, they say, If we are thrown into the blazing furnace. This is a hard passage to translate from the original language. The original language here is not Hebrew. It's actually Aramaic. It's not even the Hebrew language. It's, it's Aramaic, the language of the Babylonian people. They're speaking that language because, I mean, they're in a completely different place. And so because we don't have a whole lot of examples of ancient Aramaic, this particular passage is a little bit hard to translate. Literally, it says this. Literally, it says, if it exists, God, the one that we worship. Literally, that's what it says. If it exists, God, the one that we worship. No. So some people have translated that the way the NIV translates that, where it says, if it's true, then we will be thrown into the fire. You know, that's the parentheses. If it's true, O King, what you say, if what you say is true, then we want you to know the God that we worship is able to save us from this. But there's another way of translating that. It's possible that when they throw that if down, what they're saying is, if God is real, the God that we've been brought up to worship. And there's an if going on there. These guys have felt abandoned. They, they're not in their hometown. God's promises don't seem to be true in their lives right now. And they are doing the best that they can. But they're still confronted with massive ifs. If. And, and even more than that, if you keep reading a little bit further, it says, He is able to save us from it. He will rescue us from your hand, O King. But even if he does not, no braver words were ever spoken. Even if God doesn't come through, even if he's not even real, even if. Now, these guys are so convicted of something internally that they're willing to stand firm. And this is what I want to challenge you with. Here's your personal takeaway from this. It's that if God is with you, you can choose faithfulness even if. Let's go ahead and put that up on the screen there. If God is with you, you can choose faithfulness even if. I know you're going to face a lot of ifs. I face a lot of ifs. I mean, we all face a lot of ifs. Ifs come at us left and right. I don't know how to deal with this. I don't know how to deal with this. I don't even know if God wants me to be taking this route or if God wants me to be taking this route. There are a lot of questions. Worthy quote. And sometimes we're asked to stand firm for something, and we have this if. What if God doesn't come through? What if I live by the passages in the Bible? What if I put these things into practice in my life, and it doesn't work for me? Even if. Even if he does not. It's a big thing. These guys had every reason to feel abandoned, but secondly, they have every reason to give in to the pressure. Life circumstances put pressure on us. But I don't think we've ever faced the kind of pressure that these guys face. I mean, put yourself in a situation. Did you, did you hear how many times all those instruments were listed? It's like five or six times. Horn, flute, zither, lyre, pipes, all kinds of music. Horn, flute, zither, lyre, pipes, all kinds of music. Horn, flute, zither, lyre, pipes, all kinds of music. It's like over and over. It's like, come on, leave me alone now. Well, do you imagine what it would sound like if you got all those things doing all kinds of music all at the same time? That's a lot of pressure. You know what I'm saying? It's sound pressure. And it's pounding in on these guys. I mean, absolutely pounding in on them. And if it's not just the pressure of the sound, it's the pressure of the moment. Right there is this gigantic furnace big enough to hold four grown men, at least, 
a gigantic furnace, blazing hot, hot enough to kill guys who are near it, blazing hot, and they can hear it off to the side. You know, fire just breathing. Sorry. I didn't plan on doing that. I just thought I'd throw it in there for your own amusement. So these guys, I mean, they suddenly got the fire going off in the distance. And then to top it all off, they have Nebuchadnezzar, the most vicious king in all of recorded ancient history. When he says he would cut people up into little pieces, he did it. This guy did stuff like that. Absolutely vicious was he as a king. Absolutely ego, maniacal, everything was all about him. You got the pressure of the sound. You got the pressure of the peers standing over here. Go ahead, bow down, do that thing. You got the pressure of the furnace. And you got the pressure of the king standing right next to him saying, I'm giving you one more chance. Do you realize that right now, your body is under pressure? I mean, literally, it, it is. Here in Indiana, we're at about 700 feet above sea level. About 700 feet above sea level, the air pressure around you is about 14 and a half PSI. Stands for pounds per square inch. Pounds of pressure per square inch. I'm giving you a little science lesson, I know you can handle it. So here we go, okay? Every square inch, this is how they figure it out. A square inch, not, not like that, you know? Right now, if I put my hand there, that size is holding down the weight of all the air that's above it, okay? So all the air that's straight above me weighs, all the way to the roof of the atmosphere, weighs 14 and a half pounds right there in that inch. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. So here's the deal though, your body has about 15, now depending on your size, has about 15 square feet of surface area. Do the math, and your body right now is holding up the weight of 16 tons of air. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Your body is holding up the weight of 16 tons of air. The pressure outside your body is as strong as 16 tons total pushing in on you. And why are you not squished like a grape? It's because the pressure inside you has balanced it out. The air in your lungs, the, the pressure that your body naturally has in it with the water and the different chemicals and the bones, the pressure in 